warriors. David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine and take away the reproach from Israel? Teenagers don't do nothing unless you pay them. <laughs> or another word, what I get? Now watch this. You got to understand. A covenant is, be, is coming out of this boy. Here is a quality that no one has ever thought of while they've been out there looking at each other eye to eye. He says this. David spake to the men that stood by him saying, what shall be done of this man that killed this Philistine and take away the reproach? So he knows it's a reproach to allow that fool to talk to us like this. Fool is this uncircumcised Philistine. This is a covenant boy. This is a man of loyalty. God. This is a Jesus quality. I'll never leave you, forsake you. He says, we got a problem here. This is an uncircumcised, uncovenant, I don't care how big he is, that he should defy the armors of the living God. Now that was a shot to Dagon, because all Dagon knows is a statue. People answered him, after this man said, so shall it be done to the man that killeth him. And they told him, if you kill this guy, you get a woman. You don't tell that to a 17-year-old boy. Because <laughs> his hormones kicked up pretty strong. He's thinking, my God, the Lord had blessed me today. <laughs> this is hundredfold. I've been believing God. Thank you. It's my day. <laughs> Jesse can't say nothing because the king going to give it to her. <laughs> now watch this. Why wasn't Eliab chosen? Right here. Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men, and Eliab's anger was kindled against David. What kindled it? Envy. Jealousy. He saw David anointed. And he said, why came us down here? With whom has thou left those few sheep? In the wilderness. I know your pride. Really? And the naughtiness of thine heart. Really? How can you, in your heart so full of jealousy and enviousness and competitiveness? For thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. In other words, he's saying this. You come down here just to see us lose. <laughs> if you're going to lose, it's better that most people don't see you lose. That's why you never tell people how many times you pray for somebody that didn't get healed. That's what Pat, Brother, Dave, uh, Brother Dennis said. You know the outcome. Why? Because if it was any other way, we ain't saying nothing. <laughs> Nobody likes that. Hang on. Now David says this, what have I now done? Now how many times Eliab has spoken to that boy about different stuff? Now what I've done? Then he says, he looks at his other brother, is there not a cause? What's wrong with you? You're looking at me when you ought to be looking at that big fool out there talking, flipping his lip. What are you looking at me for? Why am I such a threat to you? I'm your youngest brother. I really love you. But why, why are you threatened by me? See, that's the problem with a lot of ministry. That's why sometimes people don't love you. Because they threaten by you. You might just get one step higher than them. And it's in front of a bunch of people. And you don't want nobody to know that you're scared. Now, you know, I could read this whole chapter, but I want to go to this, and it's a big chapter. Verse 32, David said to Saul, let no man heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight this Philistine. Now, underline that in your Bible. Go to verse 47. Underline this statement. For the battle is the Lord's. Underline that. Okay, you got that. Notice, is there not a cause? Let no man's heart fail. I'm going to take care of this boy. Fight you want, fight you going to get today. No man know that what Goliath says. Verse 47. The, what makes him so assured? It's not his battle. How many battles are you fighting that are not God's? You ought to write that down. For the battle is the Lord. But go back to verse 38. I'm getting ahead of myself. Saul sees this boy and he thinks he's a punk kid. This boy popping his lip. He don't know any better. He knows enough to believe. Have you come so deep that you've drowned? 
that you forgot the very simple principles of why you are what you are and why you believe what you believe? Have you got so deep you drowned? Have you been so used to being king you don't even realize that you're lying, disobeying, and not understanding the principles of God because you think you've arrived because you seem like you got there? Watch this. So he says, look, boy, he figured he's going to die anyway. Put on my clothes. Let me give you some armor. Look what he says. Saul armed David. Don't never let a man arm you. Saul armed David with his armor. What else can he give you? And he put a helmet of brass upon his head and also he armed him with a coat of mail. Now, do you know what he's trying to do? He's trying to make David look exactly like Goliath. You don't need to look like your enemy to defeat him. You don't have to be tattooed from your top of your head to the, feet, to the bottom of your feet to touch people who have tattoos. No, I'm not guessing it, but I'm just saying you don't have to look like the enemy to fight the enemy. I want you to hear what I'm saying here. <laughs> and this is a big problem in the body of Christ because we're all trying to look the same. How many battles are you fighting that are not God's? You got to be who you are and be proud of who you are because you are not a duplication. You don't need to look like your enemy to defeat him. If you're not true to yourself, you'll never be true to anyone else. If the suit don't fit, it's not yours. Order your copy today 